All right, so at this point I've added the functionality of being able to send an email and to share. This goes back to the idea of minimal or minimum viable product. Uh, how much more do you want to add? How much more do you want to edit? How much do you want to improve before you release your project? At this point, we've got the main ideas that I want to accomplish with my app. There's still many more things that I could do. Do I want to still work several more weeks to keep adding, keep adding, keep tweaking? Or do I want to release a version 1? And then later on, release version 2, and so forth. So I'm going to say at this point, our app is done. Yes, there could be other rough around the edges things and so forth, but again, version 2, version 1.5. So let's go through the process of actually um, publishing this. So if we look at, at my documentation, uh, sheet number 9, Let's open sheet number 9 and we'll take a look at it in brief and then we'll go into detail. So sheet number 9 When your app is complete, you must sign it with your developer certificate before publishing. Now, this is not the part about paying Google $25 to be able to be an app developer. Uh, this is something else. Uh, so we need to vouch for, in a sense, we need to approve, we need to uh, say that this is a, a, a victor.com approved app. I need to sign this as a developer. So there's a couple of ways to do it. My instruction here talks about using the, the Android Studio software. I'm going to load mine up because it's so slow, but uh, you can load yours as well uh, while I'm talking, actually. So uh, go to your Start menu, and remember this guy, Android Studio. We haven't really looked at it. We haven't really needed it. But from your Start menu, start loading Android Studio. I'll get back to the instructions in a moment. Go to Android Studio, start a new studio project. We're just going to choose all the defaults. Don't worry about changing anything. Just next, 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 finish. So it doesn't look like anything happened, but just let it proceed. This is going to take a while. That's why I'm doing it kind of quickly. But everything I just did is from my instructions here. Using Android Studio is the easiest way to create your key store which is your developer certificate. We can also do it maybe even faster with a Java with a command in the command prompt. But uh, I'm going to do it this way, the, the graphical way, and then I'll show you that we can also do it with maybe even faster with just a command. But the point is, um, we're going to launch Android, like I said here. Um, if there's any open projects, close them. Uh, start a new studio project, which I just did. Select all defaults until you click Finish, and then click Finish. Wait until everything is initialized and indexed. You're going to see a little bar at the bottom that is progressing, and it's going to give you feedback, and then eventually it will all start up. Again, mine is going to take a while. When it's finished starting up, then we're going to go through the process of officially publishing this test app that's loading up. But we just want to use Android Studio to help us create this key store. This key store is a file. It's a, it's a file, but it's not a plain old text file. It's an encrypted file that uh, has, you, has your credentials as a developer. We're going to see what credentials. It'll ask us, what's your name? What's the name of your company? What's the country that it's from? How long is this developer certificate available for, valid for? So we're going to do all of that through a nice WYSIWYG interface. We could also do it through the command prompt, but we'll do it through the WYSIWYG interface. And so my process will be in a moment when this loads up is I'm going to select to generate a, um, an APK using the wizard, and um, it'll ask us to save this file. So I'm going to say, think about this. 
we're about to create a developer certificate. You can do this for fun or for real. If you're doing it for fun, make up whatever you want, put Darth Vader into it, doesn't matter. But if you are going to use this for real, make sure you save these passwords and stuff that we're about to create. Because if you then do decide to create a real app next month, you want to use that file, and every app you create in the future, you're going to use that file. That's your credential that this is you as a developer. Yes, you can create another one, but then you're going to have problems. Because if you're going to release version 2 of your app next year and you're using a different key store, suddenly you're a different developer. Google is going to get confused. Why is this other app developer trying to release version 2 of this app from that developer? Because when we generate this key store, it's going to have you know a 128-bit encrypted protection that specifies that you are the developer. If you create a brand new key store, it's another developer in the eyes of, the, of Google and Amazon. So once we create this thing, save it somewhere. Mine's still loading up. It's giving me a helpful tip. I'm going to click close. It's still loading because it says indexing right there. So I'm going to keep talking. But this key store that we're going to save, again, you're going to save it on your flash drive. You're going to save it on another flash drive. You're going to save it on Google Drive. You're going to save it on, on uh, iCloud. You're going to save it, copies of it everywhere. Um, and you're going to remember the password to that because there's no way to retrieve it. So this is a very important file that you want to keep super safe and secure, which you're going to use for all subsequent apps. If, however, you're doing this just for fun, then don't worry. Create another key store for real next time. It's okay if you create another key store with the exact same credentials. It'll have a different fingerprint because of the way this uh, is encrypted and developed and so forth, all this magic behind the scenes. But the point is, Right now, for myself, I'm going to create this for fun. I don't care what I put into it. I'm going to delete it and forget about it later. But if you're going to create this key store for real as a real developer, you want to save it and, of course, save that password. It won't let me quite do it yet. It has to finish indexing. Eventually, when this is done, we're going to go up to this build screen. And we're going to go to build generate signed APK. This wizard will walk us through these steps that I'm talking about. And as soon as I'm able to load this up, we are then going to be able to do it together. Let's say we did create that key store, which we'll do together in a moment. That'll give us a file that we can call anything we want, .jks, JavaScript key store. That JKS file we need to save, keep it safe somewhere. So it says here. I'm giving the example. We're going to create a file called yourlastname.jks. It can be anything you want to keep it in a safe place. Then we're going to tell our app, we've been doing Cordova run or Cordova emulate, we're going to do Cordova build and tell it, use this credential. It'll then go through the normal process as always and ask you for your password twice. Once you put that password in, then the end result will be, will, will say, here's your final main release version of your app. It's ready to upload to the store. The hard part is for me just waiting for this thing to load up. But then I can actually show it to you. So even if you're not ready to publish yet, you can still do this to see this process. My Android Studio eventually loaded up. I'm going to ignore everything here. Let's go up to Build menu, Generate Signed APK. It says, OK, provide your existing credentials, or let's create some new ones. So anyone can create these credentials. That's the great thing about Android. Anyone can create developer credentials. The bad thing about Android is that anyone can create developer credentials. And then so if you create this, again, save this. If you're doing this for real, you're going to save this file somewhere very safe. Let's click Create New. A bunch of things it asks you to fill in. First of all, where would you like to save this? Click the three dots. Save this wherever you want. I'm going to save this to my flash drive. Let's see, where is my flash drive? Right here, drive F. 
I'm just going to save it to the root folder of my drive F. What name do I want? .jks. I'm just going to put um, Campos, whatever you want, your last name. It'll create .jks file. I'm saving it to my flash drive, which is probably drive F. Click OK there. All right, so this is going to ask you for two levels of protection. One password just to use your, your key store file, and then another password to use a particular alias. Technically, this key store can have several sort of users inside of it. For us, it's just going to be the one key store and the one user, or alias, right here. So it's going to ask us to create a password just to use the file, and then a password to use this alias, or this user. Those, can, those both can be the same thing if you want, no problem. Extra security is to have one password for the key store, one password for the alias. So it's not going to tell you, uh, or it's not going to complain to you what kind of password to create. You can create a password called cat. And it'll work. It's not going to be like these websites that say, make sure it's eight characters with letters and numbers and symbols. It can be anything you want, apparently. So anything you want here. The alias. Uh, again, this could be the name of a particular user. It can be the word developer. It can be anything you want. My notes say, mm, in the alias, type your last name. OK? Or the name of your company, whatever. So that's also Campos. I'm going to write this down. Campos. JKS and Campos alias. Password. I'm going to use the same password as before. For more security, you can use a different password. The documentation at, at the Google uh, developer, at the Android developer website, says that you should create a key store. I believe it says it should be valid for 30 years. So this key store that we're creating will still apply until the year 2045. So change that to 30 years. So we're just supposed to make up the path, I clicked on the three dots, and then I told it to put it on my flash drive. That way you'll, uh, you'll make sure you're saving it where you think you're saving it. And then here's the actual um, information about that developer. So first and last name. Yeah, you can make this up completely. Darth Vader. Death Star. What's that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then on the next screen, it's going to ask you to either select an existing one or create a new one. So click the Create New One first. Organizational Unit. Um, that's the fancy way of saying like your job title, developer, organization, Victor Apps, city or locality, San Diego, state or province, California, U.S. These can technically be anything. These are not being, we're creating a certificate to show that this is our app, but technically this is not being approved or vouched for by anybody at all. So we can create our own developer certificate and ourselves vouch for it. So something, if you're doing this for, for the iPhone, for iOS, this will not work. You have to get official credentials officially from Apple that officially run out in one year. And then you have to officially pay $99 every year to be an official developer on, on, app, on iPhone. But as, a, as an Android user, it's more open source, so anyone can become any developer whenever they want, for good or for bad. So this is what we need here. This is all from my notes. Click OK. It's going to process and do some hashing and such in the background. And that's all we need Android Studio for. We don't need to click Next. We just needed this helpful little GUI, this graphical user interface, to create the key store. 
I can cancel this and completely close Android Studio, and I'm done with Android Studio. So I'm not saving anything, I'm just closing Android Studio. I wanted to use it simply to create this file. If I go to my flash drive and look on my C drive, I mean my F drive, there it is, campos.jks. That was the point of using Android Studio. What's that? It's asking for the alias again. Yeah, which is what I just said on the, on the sheet. And so we could have also done this through the command prompt. Uh, I, I'd have to look it up myself because I don't have that command memorized. And you don't have to do it often, just when you create your your key store one time. This one key store file that we created, we're going to use it over and over and over for all of our apps. We don't have to create a brand new one every time. But somewhere in the documentation, we could also look up how to do it via the command prompt. If I don't see it right away, I'm going to skip it, but it's in the documentation somewhere. Shell tool, building, running, signing. Yeah, so it's going to be in the documentation where it shows you what, how to create it through the command prompt. That might have been faster than waiting for Android Studio and such, but the point is now we've got this campos.jks. The second part of my PDF here says then, okay, we've got this file, now we're going to use it. So as an overview here, um, then we'll do it. Um, I'm just saying we're going to do Cordova build, we're going to copy your JKS file into your project folder into a specific folder. Actually, there's a little typo in my handout there, number two. Uh, no, 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 there isn't. Yeah, never mind. Okay, so then two and three. Um, number three, we're going to create a very plain text file called release-signing.properties without the txt at the end. And we're going to edit that release-signing-properties file to tell it our store file. Where is our JKS file? What alias, what user inside of the JKS file are we using? Save it and close it, and then we're going to run in prompt Cordova build Android dash dash release. It will go through the whole process as before, and then at a certain point it'll stop. A pop-up, a very plain ugly pop-up will pop up and say, type in your password for your key store. We'll type it in. Then another one will pop up, type in your alias password. We'll type it in. It'll continue on its way, and then eventually at the end it'll say build successful. And it'll tell us you've got a brand new Android dash release APK. All of this time we've been getting a file called Android dash debug. Dot apk it's not the official version that we can upload that the stores will accept so doing this process will create the final official version of the app and so I'm going to do this part now. In my F drive, I've got the JKS file right there. In my project folder, we're going to back up to... We're going to exit the WW folder, back up to go into the platforms folder. <coughs> Open the Android folder. 
and then you can copy that campus JKS file into that project folder. So we're putting our key in the right place to be able to run the Cordova command to then use our credentials. Inside of this folder then we need to create the file that tells Cordova this is where our credentials are. So on an empty spot, right click, new, text document, we'll change that name completely to, to, to be called release dash signing dot properties. Yes, it's going to complain about the extension. We know what we're doing. My key store is in the folder. I've created a brand new dot properties file. Release, release dot dash signing. Let's edit that file. All right, store file capital F equals what's the name of that JKS file? In my example here, I'm saying last name.jks. Obviously, whatever you wrote, whatever however you named your JKS file, you need to reference it there. Dot JKS. Next line, key alias, capital A equals what's the alias that you made up when we were in Android Studio, I called mine Campos. Hopefully you remember what you called it two minutes ago. And that's all we need for this file. Save it. This is basically to tell Cordova where are our credentials and what alias in the credentials are we using. Now, the documentation mentions that this should be a relative path. So I could have that um, JKS file in a different folder instead of putting it in this folder, the, the Android um, platform folder. I could have it in a different folder. This is just the quickest, dirtiest way to do it. It might not be the most secure way because what we're doing is we're putting our, our credentials within our project folder. And if we, for example, have our project on GitHub, We've uploaded our key store to GitHub for everyone to have. Not necessarily to use, because they need our password, but they would have our unique key store file. So what I'm showing you here is not the best way to do it. I'm going to say it right away. And again, this is not the best way to do it, to put this key store in your project. I'm just doing it for the quick way. A better way is to put that in a different folder and have a relative path to that file. But at this point, I will proceed. So I'm going to close the properties file. Back to command prompt. Cordova um, build Android. I'm telling it, let's build the Android version. Dash, dash, two dashes right there release. We've been doing Cordova run and Cordova emulate. That only creates the debug version. Now we're going to say Cordova build, specifically the Android version, ready for release, the final version. So most of that will process the same as before. Eventually, I'll get a pop-up for my passwords. So again, if someone gets a, ha a hold of your JKS file, OK, that's not so good. But if they don't have your password, they can't access it and sign apps as you. And so this is the process eventually.
There we go. So a very simple Java pop-up. Enter key store password. And then enter key password. It should say alias. Enter alias password. This is proceeding. If you never got that pop-up, check your properties file that release signing properties file. Make sure it's all spelled the way I spelled it. It's on my notes right here. There are a couple of capital letters, store capital file, key, al key capital alias. Those should be capitalized as that. And also make sure then that your path to your JKS file is correct. That's why I simply put it in the folder. So that I can find it the fastest. Once this is done building, I'm going to remove that key store file from my app, and keep it in my other more safe um, folder. Build successful. If I look at my path at the very end, it says I've got Android release.apk. If yours says dash debug, something happened throughout the process and it didn't create the, the release version. So in my notes, I've got where to look, but um, inside of this Android project where we added this JKS file. We've got a build folder, an outputs folder, an APK folder, and here we go. This was where the debug files were being saved, and then there's the release one, android-release.apk. It doesn't save it with the name of your project. It's just generically android-release. So that is the final version ready to be uploaded to the App Store. It's only about 1.58 megabytes, so a really small app. It's not that complicated, so it makes sense. But that's, that's our final project. That's what I would upload to the App Stores. So there's still things we need to do before that. I skipped something, which I'm coming back to. But this is the process. In theory, everything that we've learned up to led up to this, and so now this is the official APK file to upload to the App Stores. We're going to talk about, of course, creating the App Store, uh, how that's all done, and uploading the project, and it'll be officially available for people to, to download. Um, so, this, if this is the official, if this is the official project to upload, we've actually kind of made a big mistake. We didn't do one final pre-flight check. Is this really the final thing to upload? We've been working with the HTML and the JavaScript and the CSS and so forth, but we might have forgotten something also pretty important. That config XML file. If you've been using my project out of my network folder, I have deliberately put wrong things in there. Just to remind us to come back to it. So yeah, we, we signed the official release version, but we can do it again. It will override that one and output the correct one. But let's go back to the config XML file on the root of our project. So just back up to the top root of the project and let's right click at it, config XML.
line two. This is still set to generic Smith. Again, if this if this app is just for fun, it doesn't matter. But if you are going to upload this for real, and we've seen examples of previous semesters, students have gone all the way and uploaded their version. So uh, if you do want to go all the way and upload your version for future classes to see and get jealous of, then I do recommend we go through this completely. So you want to change your line two for your last name or whatever. If you do have a real website, you can put it there, but put in your real last name, not Campos. You can also then update the, the, the date, this version here. Remember, we're using our version number here just as the date of publication. So today is already 8.11. We're going to keep that as Android version code 1. It's still version 1 of our code, even though we've been editing and editing and editing it. We're really only going to update this incrementally with whole numbers once we're uploading a new version to the App Store. So even if we're only changing one, uh, one background color of one button, it's going to be version code 2. So when we upload version 2 of our project, we need to remember to increment the Android version code, and technically we don't have to increment this in any logical way, but I could put a two point whatever, or I could put still 1.2015.0901, but that'll still have to be version Android code two. Keeping that as one. Anything else here? Smith, my SDCE? No, I'm gonna put my last name, your last name, Description is fine. Number seven, I, we've got a, a fake generic email and, and web address there. You can keep those, or I'm going to recommend you change them. So put in any email of yours. And if you've got a website, add a website. I think you can leave it empty if um, you don't have a website. Line 8 is the line about what's the name of your company. So if you recall when I was creating my, my JKS file in Android Studio, it asked me that. It asked me for organization and organizational unit. Organization, I forgot what I wrote. I think I wrote Campus Apps. So that's your company for this, for this app. So if, if you're going to publish this eventually, then make up a company name here for real or for fake uh, for practice so I'm going to call this campus apps and I don't need to change anything else here but these are the things that that would be part of our our final pre-flight check all of our code our JavaScript works our HTML works our CSS works great but always remember to check your config file because most likely you're going to need to update your version code and your Android version code. Also, if we go back to the www folder, we don't need that index 2 anymore, do we? So maybe do this as well. Check, do we have files here that are just hanging around taking up space? We had index 2 at the beginning of this month because we, we needed that code, or did we do it last month? We needed that code um, as our template for when we took our project from month 1 and upgraded it to an Android project. So I've got it backed up elsewhere, so I'm going to delete index 2. Let's see, do I have any other things that are just kind of hanging around without any use? All my fonts are good. My images. I believe we're using all of our images, so that's good. And what we could also do, I'm not going to do it now, but we, what we could also do, uh, go into our different JS, CSS, and HTML files and maybe add some comments. Now that the project is pretty much done, I can go back in and add comments to how the code works, comments to myself and such, because it's all finished. Um, 
part about what about this? My st oh yeah, that was the that was the style sheet for the design the colors of the of the site of the project. So didn't have to do anything radical here, but again, I could go into my Kodika file and add more comments because maybe I finally am done with this. I publish this this week, and then all of this hard work that I've done for these three months, great, I published it. And then I I said I want to look at. I'm tired of this. I don't want to look at it for a month. So you take some time off. You come back from a month from now. You're ready to add to it. You forgot everything that you did. So with some comments, hopefully then you can uh, leave yourself notes to explain yourself what you did, what you want to do for future updates. So I'm going to close in Notepad. I'm going to close all my files. I'm gonna back up to the to the root of the project and I'm gonna run this build one more time. Cordova build Android release. Yes. Yes, very good point there. Thanks for that too. Uninstall plugins. I said we were gonna do this last time and I forgot. But we've got a bunch of plugins that are installed that we don't need. We've got these plugins to access the user's contacts and such. Um, we're going to scare people if they're trying to download this and it says this app will ask for this, 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 and this. So we're going to remove. That's another thing we should do then. We've got all the plugins active. Let's remove plugins we don't need. So I forget which plugins we have. Let's type Cordova plugins. So these are the plugins that are installed. Let's take a quick look which don't we need, and then we'll remove some. So whitelist, let's keep that one. That lets us have more security by approving resources that we can connect to. Device, anyone remember? Did we use device? Yes, to get the version. We did. We use a device to get the version of Android so that we can activate or not pouch. So we'll use device. Network information. Technically, we're not using network information, so I'll make a note that I might remove that. We're not really checking if there's an internet connection before trying to do online queries. We could do it in the future, but that's why I'm going to make a note. Battery. We're not doing anything with the battery. We could remove that one. I'll make a note. Device motion. We're not doing anything with checking um, accelerometer and such. So that's device motion, device orientation. Um, I don't believe that it's exactly related to what we wrote inside of the config file. Remember in config we do have a spot there that says uh, Android only orientation equals portrait. I don't recall if that relates to this, but I'm going to leave it just to be safe. Geolocation, yes, we're trying to access that map, remember. Camera, are we taking photos with our app? No, so that's going to be a candidate for removal because people are going to say, why does this app want permission to use camera if there's no way to take a photo? Is it taking photos of me when I'm sleeping? So, camera, capture, we don't, we don't use capture. That one's also for recording. Uh, I believe that one's for recording video. Media is to access media from uh, from the device. Like um, remember when we uh, we don't have it working on here, but remember when we had a pop up happen and it played a sound and such. That was media. We've got file and file transfer. We don't use those. That's accessing files from the SD card, for example. Notification. We're not using notification, but we might in the future. We might come back and add some notification features, so I'm going to leave notification. We're not using vibration, but we could add some vibration feature very easily, so I'll leave that. We're not accessing the user's contacts. We'll take that out. 
globalization. We're not using that, but I'm going to leave it because I might get back into adding multiple languages to my project, translating it to different languages. We're using the splash screen and we're using the in-app browser. And we're going to we're going to leave console because if we continue to work on our project later, I want to get console output and I'm going to forget to reinstall it perhaps. And then the last one, social sharing. Of course, we need that one. So to remove uh, a plugin, the syntax is Cordova plugin remove, and then we have to say the name of the plugin as it's listed here Cordova dash plugin dash file. Not the friendly name in quotes, but the long name. So uh, Cordova. I said we're not using dash plugin dash battery dash status so I'm just that's why I did Cordova plugins so that it tells me what to write and then I wrote Cordova plugin remove and the particular name listed here before the version number and so it's saying, okay, we're removing uh, your battery, the ability to check battery. So I said, I'm going to also device motion. And then camera. Capture. So whatever makes sense that your project is not using, remove it because you don't want to uh, capture is not present in the project. Uh, and specifically, it's called media dash capture. So this all comes from early on last month when we created that basic Cordova project and we activated all of the uh, all of, of the plugins in case we wanted to use them. Now we don't need them so it's a good idea to remove them. On this particular one it's telling me that if I remove one it's dependent on another. So Cordova plugin file is required by Cordova plugin media and file transfer and cannot be removed until I remove those other ones or use the force. Uh, use the force. So I can use the force um, flag uh, and that way I can force it. Okay, remove this one even though it's attached to that other one. So the way I can handle that is to use force or I can uh, delete those other two and then delete this one. So in any event, take a moment to delete those plugins I think we can actually chain this so that we don't have to do it over and over. I think after we mention one, then we can mention more within the same line. So adding Cordova plugin media or a file Cordova plugin file transfer
Yes, so you can mention more than one plugin at once and remove them at once. Okay, so I still need uh, contacts. So there's no right or wrong here of what you have or what you don't. You just uh, should have active what is necessary for your project and um, remove what is not. So even though I'm technically not using vibration or notification, I could remove it, but again I'm thinking forward because eventually I'm going to add that those features in version 2. This is what mine currently has, whitelist device device orientation, geolocation, notification, vibration, globalization, splash screen, in-app browser, console, and social sharing. So if you have those, then you can run Cordova build Android release. And then it's a perfect time for a break. It's 8.20. We'll take one more break until 8. 30. When we come back, then we'll start to shift gears to talk about creating a developer account. Um, and we'll go through that process together. We're going to create the free one, uh, so you don't have to worry about paying the Google fee. But um, we're going to do it the free method, and it'll apply pretty much to the paid version. But we'll take a break, and when we come back at 8.30, we'll start with that.